Okay. Right. Yeah. So, Nora, where are you born? Oh, okay. So, it's a chronological uh, yeah, journey. Yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. So, I was born in Argentina. Okay. Where in Argentina? In the capital, Buenos Aires. Of Buenos Aires. Okay. And did you live there for all of your childhood years? Yeah. Okay. Up until the age of? How old were you? Yeah, I'm early 20s, I think. Okay. Yeah. So did you live there up until you left? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's one of the most exciting cities in the world. <laughs> yeah. You nice. have everything to do, to see, to hear, you know, okay. at any time. Beautiful. And what neighborhood did you live in? Uh, it's called Almagro. Okay. Parque Centenario I Almagro. I was in Bishop Crespo. When I was little, and then mm. we moved to the old Calle Panama. Mm. Okay. Mm. So two different neighborhoods. Okay. Right? Mm. And did, were you guys leaving close. town at all? I thought there was some other... San Clemente. Oh, no, but that was... With the, the country the, house or something like that? Yeah, it was in the beach. We moved okay. there for the three months of summer. Okay. They summered in San Clemente. San Clemente. Yeah. Okay, cool. At some point. Before that, we did like one month there and one month in Cordoba. Okay. Mm. Nice. Beautiful province. Mm. Beautiful. Um, and then I've actually mm. never been overly clear on specifically, I guess, why you left. You were a youth organizer, is this correct? Yeah. Okay. So take me to the years, let's say, like after high school. You graduate high school, then you go to college in Buenos Aires. There is no college, so you go straight to university. Okay. It's more like it follows the European system. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so as I was growing up, so a lot of um, Latin American countries fell victims of the United States external politics mm -hmm. that treated Latin America as their own backyard and, and as their puppets. Yes. Right. And they put all kinds of these dictators and took away um, crashed all the democracies mm. that were good or bad, whatever. It was a uh, what people elected. Right. And right. so they placed in there mostly they were military um, government. Right. So uh, at the time, and it was very clear, they were falling like one after the other. Mm -hmm. So in, my, in the case of Argentina, we knew that um, there was going to be a coup d'etat, clearly prepared by the states. They would send their um, uh, emissaries, they would send their secretary of state. Everybody knew what was coming, mm. and it was in those days, uh, felt, uh, first fell Uruguay, uh, no, first... Chile. Right. That's the Pinochet. September 11th. Yeah. So seventy. Yeah, I think so. The less appreciated September 11th. Yeah, the less appreciated. Yeah, the less appreciated. Yeah, it was the less appreciated. Yes. I'll tell you how I know. September 11th. I'll tell you how I know. After 2001. Because 11th. It's the day of the um, teachers in Argentina. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It was like it was it's a commemorative mm -hmm. day. And so first was that they assassinated Salvador Allende. Okay. Um, of course they presented it like he committed suicide, which is a lie. Right. And, and uh, did every did you, was the feeling that everybody knew that this was the case at the time? Yes. Or this this wasn't didn't like come up later in some sort of it was like this is very clear that this is what has happened. For us everything was very clear. Okay, that the US coming in and then Yeah. Okay. And, and then telling lies and pretending everybody's an idiot. Right. Um so that was uh, and then uh, I think I don't remember if it was before or after that uh Uruguay fell. And then we knew what was coming. But you guys were essentially next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, ha what happened. We didn't have a very strong government to begin mm -hmm. with. They had the... Uh, anyway, so... Uh, right, were all these ups and, and downs and sort of bef also going on before this? Like this sort of like uh, like economic instability, I guess? Yeah, because when you don't have political stability, right. you have, uh, you know, economic st instability. Right. So then uh, we had this, uh, then the, the militaries came, the right. coup d'etat. It was a triple military coup, right. which, is, la junta. which is different 
from like Chile. So it was triple because it was the Navy, it was the air guys, the air and it was like the military general. Right. Yeah, and the, they, they kind of all took of them, turns. And, and they yeah. all did a junta and did a coup d'etat. Yeah. Like that was not the case in Chile. Chile was like one guy. Right. This was three. Right. Which yeah. is crazy. Right. Yeah. So, and how old were you when this happened? Um, good question. Maybe 15, 16. 15, 16. Okay, wow. Um, 15, 16. So anyway, so um, then. And did it, for the most part, like how did it, was it nationwide or did it mostly go down in? Like the capital. Yeah. What, what do you mean? No, once it happens, it just has jurisdiction in the whole country. Right, right. But for the most part, the coup took place in the capital. Yeah, that's, that's right. where the government has Right, sits. okay. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, the, the and then how much? The, the opposition to this coup was coming from where? What do you mean, the opposition to this coup? Wait, it was a coup? The people? Who was opposing the coup? There's nobody opposing. They have the tanks, they come out on the streets with the arms, with the tanks. So who's the so fighting the against each other? So that's a, that's a, the, the, he didn't ask me yet. So, so yeah. uh, afterwards, there is something that we, is known as the dirty war. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? So there was a lot of uh, movements. Mostly there were like youth movements, but mm. not everybody, you know, were people all that. But mostly was like that. Students. Was this immediately after that this was starting to take place? All these groups existed. Oh, they were already they existed. They were already there and they would like... Uh, but Which is probably why they wanted to put a puppet government to begin yeah, with. Because, because there was so much afraid. socialism going on. Yeah. On torneros. Yeah, so... And this is what you mean by even prior to it, there's a lot of sort of political instability because you have all these different sort of groups. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, well, because the country needed changes. And yeah. The country needed some financial stability. Those are countries that... Um, so the way it seems to work is that they, they grow a big debt because they impoverish those countries. So they go to the International Monetary Fund. Like the, the IMF, the IMF, and so they say, okay, so we we will give you the money, but then you know they give you this money with certain conditions, mm -hmm. and then they they are diffi very difficult conditions. These populations have to suffer through that. Mm -hmm. um, there is lots of inflation, and there is um, like neoliberal policies. Interest, yes, and then the interest rates triple or even more mm -hmm. these debts. Right. So these countries are not, don't own, they don't own their country. Right. Yeah. Because right. you're always paying this debt. But that's how the rich countries live off the right. poor countries. Right. So it's, a, you know, unfortunately on top of that, you have a lot of corruption. Because a lot of people in power will basically Paid steal the money. You. Right. They just steal the money. So then you add to the misery of the people right. and you add to this debt, but nobody, the rich countries really don't want these countries to pay the debt because then it's okay, you don't have more money, okay, we'll right. come and take your silver, we'll take your uh, titanium, we'll right. take your milk, we'll right. take your... You they know. want to be able to call the shots. Bananas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, so then, then all these movements suddenly became uh, illegal, right? Right. Because now you couldn't go out, you couldn't... Now that there was a junta. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus there was, uh, there was um, um, you know, certain rules, like if they, they would come in, like let's say we're in, we were in a coffee place, mm -hmm. so the army could come in, close the doors, and uh, God forbid you didn't have your documents with you. Mm. I remember, I, everybody was so in now. They said, are you taking money for a taxi? Are you, take, are you taking the documents? You know, mm. it, was it was like, like one uh, of the things you just... Yeah, you wouldn't think of this uh, here, but right. there was like a regular... No, thing. they're much nicer than that. They were looking what book you are reading in the coffee. Okay, that was... It's a book. Like, are you an intellectual? Right, sure. No, but there were certain coffee places that were known as mm -hmm, like intellectuals mm -hmm. or, or for example, um, near the universities, okay? They would come, for example, with, um, with, with um, trucks and the dogs, 
Mm. Okay, the army. We just go to um, <coughs> the university. The most popular was philosophy. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. uh, philosophy and psychology were together. I put the idea in mind. And um, and then just basically come in, and as people were running out, the trucks were open, mm, and they just put them in. Go to arrest them. Yeah, that's how they disappeared. Mm -hmm. Officially in arrest, but then they would become. Okay, yeah. so you're around fifteen, sixteen. Mm. The coup happens, and then when did this? First of all, when does the dirty wars like I start? It's is it directly part. after that yeah. sort of? Yeah, this is this was what led, what led. See, they call it a war. The militaries will call it a war, but it was not right. It was more the military. Just it was just yeah. There was a coup d'état, and then the, these people were fighting to be able to express their ideas. Mm -hmm. Right. I and see. so are you, and you are involved in this sort of movement, or this is more when you get into your university years that you sort of get into this kind of stuff, or? No, everybody would go. Everybody is. Yeah, well, no, I shouldn't say everybody. Most people. Because you were in high school at this point. Yeah. So when, like, when you get to university, are you, like, part of any groups? No, I was already part in the high mm -hmm. school. I was a really, I was an activist, like most of my friends. Okay. And then, okay, and then we're getting into sort of disappearances and mm. these are sort of... What about like, La Noche de los, de los Lapices? I wasn't there by then. That's after. That was, I guess it was... So we'll get there. The dictatorship was about 10 years. It was really long. It was right. very it was like long. like longer sure. than other places. And uh, they... We're going to record again. So, Nora, we've unfortunately been cut off uh, due to my that inability to record thing. things. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, we just talked about, um, I guess, the disappearances and the dirty war sort of starting. Mm -hmm. um, and your high school years, and you're saying that you were... And university. And yeah. university, and that you were involved in some most, of yeah. the sort of um, political backlash of this most, coup d'etat. Most people were. And like, most people uh, were. Had a, a national compromise. Right. And then, the so you talk about as you sort of in your university years, in your twenty early 20s, um, the Falcon War starts and you describe to us um, sort of the goings on of the Falcon Wars, of how both there was this uh, dictatorship that was sort of maybe losing or wanting to gain maybe favor of the people and started starting and to distract. this at this the dis population started this war to distract the population and then later sort of Thatcher also gets involved in fueling this war further because she is also trying to do a similar thing in the UK um mm -hmm. Uh, and so was it the feeling of most people in Argentina that this was a clear attempt at distracting the population? Yeah, yeah. And yeah people are not stupid. Right. So, um, and it was a disaster war because they were not prepared. Yeah, it's not really, a disaster war. Yeah, drafting, drafting, drafting right, drafting and then people. so they started drafting. Yeah, yeah. Right. They had no experience. No right, not and a, who also... The main point being is that did not democratically vote for this government, and yet you're being drafted right. into a government yeah. that you did and not. Fa their fake like um, patriotism, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. fake. Some, unfortunately, some people bought into that because because you know, of the pa well, that's the point. Right? Yeah, because attuning to the patriot, exactly. Um, patriotism. But uh, it was really sad. But anyway, so that's what happened. Many people left. And uh, so okay. that was it. So uh, we applied here because my father had m most of his family here. And they, okay. interestingly, they were watching what was happening, mm -hmm. which was not fully shown to the population in Argentina. And they were saying, you know, you have to get out of there. And oh, they so were telling they, you to they also They were leave. saying, just leave that country. Okay. So, you know, and so you were having some issues getting the Canadian visa. And so you decided to go to Argentina, to Israel, uh, to Israel excuse me. Um, right, this is another part that we missed. Um, going to Israel, and the choice was that because you said that you always knew that you wanted to go to Israel. One day I was going to go. I didn't even know if I was going to go live there, if I was going to go, go somewhere visit. else or visit. Or so that, it, it just happened that it was 
the right time to go. And you said that they were sort of accepting a more leftist. Uh, they were youth. no, they were rescued. They were rescuing Jews from right from right. the military. Right. Most of and the, Andre, your husband, being a prime another prime most example. Most of, of the leftist uh, Argentinian opponents to the military dictatorship were liberal were Jewish. Jews. Liberal Jews. Oh, it or not. in Argentina. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. So somehow Israel, Israel wanted to save the Jews from the dictatorships, but they are stuck that they are all leftist. <laughs> right, right. So they hold their nose that they are leftist. Oh, do you think that that was the feeling of the is Israeli oh, yeah, yeah. government at the time? In I think Israel, they were like, oh, we would have liked. <laughs> we just would have preferred non yeah. left. But you know, that's a bit, yeah. that's what you, you get. What you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They you didn't have to say ask. Your they you didn't have to say your ask. Juice, no okay. matter what. So, so, so the main thing was the Jewish agency was taking people out to Uruguay, mm. giving them because they didn't have passports. Many of them. See, the, is, the, depends how you. The left. Israeli government. Yes, depends. You how guys you were left. leaving from Uruguay. Sorry, not to no, cut you off. No, I, I was, I had no problem. Okay, to leave. but with within Uruguay. Yeah, okay. I did stop in Uruguay, but for different reasons. Because okay. the the airline that Israel had at that time had uh, anyway, so some had connection. to know one some connection with the British. So in order to, I think it was KLM, and it was it's a little ironic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the only way to leave for them was because the, these planes were not getting to the country. Uh. So it was from Montevideo. Okay. But it doesn't okay. matter. Yeah. Okay, so you leave Bogota. Uh, sorry, not Buenos Bogota. Aires. Jesus. <laughs> just talking about Colombia. Buenos Aires. Um, and then Uruguay and then to... Uh, to Israel. To Israel. Yeah, we and stopped along the way, but it didn't... Doesn't Wait, matter. But we made it to Israel. Okay. No, it does matter because it's part of the project. Where are the stops? <laughs> where are the stops? The you pro- just did layovers <laughs> wherever they were. Okay. And then you uh, landed yeah, in layovers. Israel. Where in Israel did you, I imagine... Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Mm-hmm. And then did you stay in Tel Aviv for a little bit? What was... Once you got to Israel, what was the first once experience? Once I got to Israel, so I left with two suitcases completely alone. <laughs> <laughs> Had nobody there. 21. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Didn't speak any English. Some French, French, but they hardly spoke French. Okay. But any Hebrew? Well, we no, met, I had we taken. Yeah, I had taken some uh, basic course. At least it helped to know the alphabet in Hebrew. And, and so. fluish in Yiddish. This no, is... I don't speak Yiddish. <laughs> fluish. <Just not. laughs> no, and um, yeah. So, uh, and then from there, they, we, we went to this place that's called Merkaz Klita. Merkaz means center, and Klita is absorption. So there were centers of, uh, of to like absorb immigrants. Oh, okay. Yeah. An integration integration. Center. Okay, and was this in um, Tel Aviv? Or? It's in the Tel Aviv area, but okay. it's not right there. It's in a place that's called Farsava. Okay. Um, Saba means grandfather, so it's a town of grandfather. Oh, okay. To welcome you in. Yeah. Okay, and how long did you stay there for? I was there for about a year, then I moved to another Mercas Clitan, one block from the beach. Oh. That's my, yeah, but uh, yeah, so. And I, where was that? Um, it, it's called Erzliya, Erzliya Pitua. Okay. And this is still in the Tel Aviv sort of yeah, greater area? Yeah, in the same area. Okay. This is a place where we used to go to the beach. The Fasaba didn't have, uh, that's an Arab beach. Okay. And um, so, yeah, so I spent two years in Israel. Okay. I learned the language. I okay. worked uh, with children. Okay, with children. As a psychologist, because all my degrees were uh, recognized. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow, that's and, great. Uh, yeah. Okay, and did you meet Andre in the first or the second? In the first. I okay. probably, what, a few weeks after I got there? Oh, my God. No a way. few weeks? It was a destiny. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the same. I was coming from Romania. He, I was he lived not, above my apartment. This was not meant to be. <laughs> and yet. And, yet, come, baby, come, and here we are in the DJ. Tell your piece. 
yeah, okay, so know. you guys met after, wow, a couple of weeks of you being there. How long had you been there? So this absorption. You've just been waiting been. for Nora to show up pretty. The, the Answer the question. How long had you been there? Mommy was a few weeks, you? I was a few months. Okay. He was like six months before me. Okay. Because I was doing my rounds around, you know. <laughs> And you were waiting for me. Yes, I yeah. was waiting for you. But there you go. The absorption center is, is a beautiful concept of because I would expect Quebec and they go to, to, to learn from that. Well, they kind of do. They've got if, it's if called you the you want to emphasize the immigrants, you create yeah, you immigration No, center. but it's different. Okay, now it's a different <laughs> philosophy. For the Israelis, these are Jews. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. You have the same philosophy of life. And these kids people united, right, because no matter where people are from, we have the same mm, of uh, rights, the same food, the same, most of us, and of course there's the um, Arab Jews and the European Jews, but, you or know. Or South American Jews, yeah, they're totally it, different. It, no, but we, we also depends, I mean, I, you know, even if you come from South America, my grandparents come from Europe. Right. My grandfather was from Romania. Right. Okay, so there is always this uh, link, and I had friends whose parents came from Turkey, from Morocco. They came from South America, but from the Arab uh, branch of mm. Jews, so the Sephardim. So that's the philosophy. That's why here I don't think it happened, because for mm -hmm. them, no matter where you are, right. um, you like at least you're, you you're share, right? Yeah, right. Like I landed in in Madrid, and there was a Shabbat. And when did you go to Madrid? I mean, later on, when I went to teach this course oh. in uh, Galicia, and so we we landed there, and it was it was Friday, and um, and they were celebrating Shabbat, and here I was. And so I knew about that, observe less than these people. But, you know, you just go into the, doesn't matter where you are. Actually, mm. there was a guy from Chicago who was there because there was a strike and it was Shabbat and he needed a place where to do his prayers and he ended up in this house. No matter where you're from, we all communicated and the act was the same. Mm -hmm. So that's when, ha that's, the premise of the Israeli government at the time, the spirit to which they figure, you know, no matter where right, people come from. Right, the exactly. population that's coming in. So he was my neighbor. And, he had uh, a TV. He had a TV that his sister on top left. of a fridge. Greg bought that. Yeah. <laughs> no, his sister could not bought could that because she was coming I mean, from Romania, but All the right. American Jew could. <laughs> okay, so you were there for two years. Andre left after one, is this correct? Yeah. One and a half or something? Yeah. And then went to France? Yeah. And did you go and see Andre in France? Yeah, yes. I went to see. Okay, you went to go see Andre a couple yeah. times? One time. One time. For mm. how long? I stayed a month. Oh, nice. And then back to Israel? Yeah. Back to Israel. Okay. And then did you go anywhere else in Israel? You're mostly in Tel Aviv for the most part. You mean to live or to visit? Well, I guess to live well, or to visit. You can visit the country, you know, three days if you're in a rush. It's a very small country. Right. Oh, okay, so, I hear you, yeah. And when you're taking the, your Hebrew courses, they take you to That you go around. Places. Okay, yeah. got you. It's small. And, uh, yeah, so after I came back, I think I moved... Around that time, that's when I moved to the Epslia, and then after this, I didn't stay there too long. Okay. And then I packed everything. It's the and then your time. visa comes through? Sorry. To no, my parents had moved to Canada. Oh, so and, you. Um, and at the time, the time for Israel was over. The, Israel was very sensitive to the governments they had. Mm. And um, at the time, I can't remember who was uh, in the government, but I think it was more like the right-wing government. And a lot of people began to leave. Oh, really? Yeah, because the circumstances changed. Mm. Many couples met there and left. Mm. That was um, sort of the norm. Yeah. Okay. Sort of, um, you know, some people stayed, but the, it was... The mood at the time, and then my parents, and I didn't know I was gonna come to Canada. I said, okay, I'm gonna go check. I hadn't seen them for two years, or whatever. I came, and then he started to say, "Don't I'm, go back." 
what is so does your does a visa come through in Canada or because your parents visa got accepted you no, were my, there for yeah, my parents visa got I also got my visa but I had left the country already in Argentina so it wouldn't have no I couldn't so I I took a visitor visa okay and, and then I stayed. came here and then when Winnipeg. I in Winnipeg, yeah. and I wanted to run away from there. <laughs> and then I remember we extended it once. Uh, we went to it, and then uh, they told me because there was a law. I don't know if it exists, but if you're the only member of a family uh, group, who's not that, there? Uh, yes, that you that is not in Canada, you could apply. Oh wow! So they did tell me about that, and I said thank you. No, because I at that time I thought I would go back. To Israel. Oh, wow. And Papi so was in France this whole time. He was in France. And then he's telling me, no, no, stay there. Stay oh, so there. you were just you were just going to say hi to the family and check it yeah. out. and Because really you hadn't seen know. them in two years. Yeah. But I, but also you got to Winnipeg and you were like, I'm not exactly, sure. Exactly. I'm sorry, Doug. No worries. No offense. <laughs> I mean, you know, was born. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only one in your corner was a Okay. Girl. It's actually, it's very, it gets us onto a good note because... I've heard Andre's sort of perception of, I guess, landing and then getting there and what he thought. And it sounds like you had a very similar experience yes. of... Yes. Yeah. You know, we were desperately looking for a, a European a movie. Yeah, Everything yeah, yeah, was yeah. King Kong yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, the wrestling. I couldn't believe that. It was terrible. <laughs> Your people do. Hmm. Sorry, Wait. I'm sorry, King Kong and wrestling? wrestling. What do we mean? Wrestling, TV, you know, that's all they want. It was horrible. <laughs> I mean, no culture. Yeah. Okay, you know, I, I got you. That. I got you. There's no art films being watched. They're looking, it's all... they're looking for European films. Right. Yeah. So okay, I got you. Place, and, you know, and those days. And no espresso. Oh, no, no espresso. espresso. Okay, Jinx. <laughs> yeah. No we found one place, a Portuguese place in Corridon. Yeah. And then we <laughs> go <laughs> there. No yeah, and no cinematic. No, then we found out about Alliance Francaise. Oh. I will never forget, there was this French guy who came and bought a house and was fixing it. And he he would bring films. We, we watched this beautiful film, Molière, at the Alliance Francaise. And we were desperate yeah, for it. Yes, I love yes. it. Okay, so you get there to Winnipeg. Um, and then you stay there for however long? How long until In Andre... Total, uh, no, until no, I that came. Visit. Or did you go back to Israel before no, you... No, no, Okay, no, you no, stayed. You and visit, Andre, you stayed. Andre yeah. told you to stay. He says Manitoba sounds I'm very cam- formal yeah, and cool. Yeah, it's and, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, you know, my husband is famous for not listening. And I was warning him. <laughs> and he, Manitoba, what's that exotic name? Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from Paris. <laughs> Paris, Manitoba. <laughs> Yeah, so, sounds anyway, better than but Paris. we met nice, very nice people. And <laughs> right, friends. this was the question. You guys made lots of friends, Bruce, Bruce of and, course. Uh, we used to call, yeah, kids, we kind of lost touch now, but yes. Okay, and then you had, I kind of I actually have lots of the story from Andre now, but you then you had um, Amira in Winnipeg. Yeah. Amira is a Winnipeg. And you did a little more schooling in Winnipeg, is that correct? You got your master's? Or no. Your... no, no, my master's was, was recognized it? from oh, Argentina. No, PhD. My PhD was done at McGill. McGill. And then, because, okay, so because then. Because Winnipeg was like, no. So then, right? you they guys stay in Winnipeg for how long after you have Amira, let's say? Eight months. Eight months. And did you have Amira? How long were you in Winnipeg in total? Maybe should be my Two question. Years. Two years. I okay. Think so. Two years, and then you Not leave, years. and you go to Toronto first. Is this correct? No, to we, scope out houses. Didn't we Papi went. Say no, that? no, no. We went. You, to we went to visit your your cousin. Your, he has a. You cousin. clearly had different intentions when you went there. <laughs> no, we looked around. You no, looked Andre, around. wait a yeah, wait a <laughs> second. So no, all of a sudden they had this special of tickets to Toronto for ninety nine dollars, which was really a flight. Yes. What about the car? No, wait a second. So we, <laughs> he had a cousin there. Pammy's uh, father is dad's cousin. Okay. And uh, with his family, whatever. So we said, okay, we'll go visit Toronto and then we'll take a look at what's cooking there. <laughs> okay. 
We both had the bias of a French city. Mm. Okay, because Argentina also, I don't know now, but in those days, was more uh, European style French. Sure. So um, then we we still we went to see. So in those days, Toronto was not really a big. Uh, it wasn't that sophisticated. That's what Andre said as well. Yeah. Yeah, but. Anyway, so we look around, I went to see, what, yes, too, I went to see, because in Winnipeg I was working for um, something that we used to call Jewish Family Service, so they had like group homes for youth in trouble, nobody okay. Jewish, I mean anybody. That's okay. members. Right, so they used to work we became childcare workers, mm -hmm. and then a lot of the, these people, unfortunately, you know, they would like... Um, uh, and the youth protection, some of them, so they live within the house for different psychosocial issues. And um, so I learned English, I met friends, and I worked in this uh, place. And then I, uh, yes, I went to the University of Manitoba because I was thinking to go into my PhD. And they were, they didn't say like no, but they were saying, well, but then you have to do this course and that course. Mm, yeah, right. You know, I remember all kinds you. of things. The professional order had recognized my degree, so I could work with that. But, you know, it's different. But you, okay, okay, you had a master's up to that point, is that right? Yeah, it's like from Argentina. West, right? Yes. Okay. And then. Um, you had a master's at the age of 22? What? You had a. Yeah, because we didn't have, we don't have CJ or college. I finished very, so you finish your high school and you go straight to university. Right, but. We don't okay. have undergrad. Okay, there's no undergrad. So you, uh, uh, so you go straight to whatever you pick. A very specific sort of. Right. Okay, got you. So the only thing we shared the first three years was with uh, psychology with, uh, or two years with students that went, were going into sociology because of common, you know, philosophy. <coughs> and okay. Then, and then... You with, all branch off into your own thing. Right. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, so Toronto, and then it sounds like you didn't take the car, in which case you came back to Winnipeg, is that yeah, right? Yeah, we went back to Winnipeg. Okay. You were like, Toronto's not for us, but we know we want to leave. Yeah. <laughs> and for school. Yeah, but, and, well, you they, can't everything what was happening kind of at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know that well what would happen. And that's when, remember, uh, we were uh, looking into the university, and that's when this um, professor invited us for supper. What was her name? She was a Jewish, she was a Shabbat. What, what city? In Winnipeg. That's where we met the Indian yes, students. Yes, it was Chinese, actually. No, it was... <laughs> She was not Chinese. Ah, oh, yes, she, she, she was a specialist in Chinese. She was a specialist in Chinese, but it was a professor at the University of Manitoba, and yes. I was trying to put together my application. And okay. so she said, okay, why don't you come for, to that look at your CV on how to, whatever, work uh -huh. through the application. And she decided to invite us for a um, Shabbat. Mm. And when we went there, she had invited her a student with his sister. And from India, so wait, so we're having supper, and they're telling us they're going to visit their parents in India. So the the flight was leaving through via Vancouver because once you're in Winnipeg, you're in the middle of the country. Uh, you're right. You may as well go way. Way. Um, a week later, these people were in the uh, Air India that exploded. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were shocked. Well, how did it explode? Oh, because there is there was an act of terrorism. Right. I don't know if it was an Air Indian Air Canada. You know the, these things that they have with Jesus. the six. And in Canada, yeah, 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 right. Okay. This is a recent. Yeah. Also. So uh, and then now that they had some issues that effectively like, there was killed. Um, this whole issue about the the plane, the plane came back because oh. it was kind of the, mm. it was the same thing. You can't have an act of terrorism in another country mm. and you're fighting, you're fighting your country, you know, like that type. So that, but that was, uh, anyway, so, um, so that's what happened with the University of Manitoba. So then I, uh, meantime. And then had you guys heard of Montreal? Is this the sort of, 
that it was French and that was sort of what well, you guys were more looking that, for. My father and, had his uncle in here. And with did his they family. leave? Family. Oh yeah, his uncle. Oh okay, got gotcha. you. Uncle Jack. Uncle Jack. Uncle Jack. Okay. And Marsha. Mm-hmm. Okay, got gotcha. you. Yeah. And then another family in Winnipeg. Yeah, so the they, K- they the Kato. Remember? No. Yeah, I know Kato. Oh, that's Uncle that's, Jack. No. Or, yes, or the, Uncle, Uncle Jack is related no. to the... Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Uncle Jack... That's why you guys originally... This is good, actually. Because this is why you guys originally went to Winnipeg, Winnipeg right? Yeah. Because you had connection. this... My, my father's... Jewish-Argentinian connection. Your father... Excuse... My father's cousin. Your father's cousin. Right. First cousin? Yeah. Wow. And he was Cattell. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. And so he had employed basically most people who work with where his own family was a, a large family. Right. And that guy's brother's Uncle Jack? Uh, no, Uncle Jack was the uncle. Oh, of this guy. Of this guy too, but he took care of this mm-hmm. uh, east part of yeah. Canada. He was based in Montreal okay. and he handled all this here. He, then he had these two sons that also mm-hmm. worked with him. Okay. So we're like, they're... Uh, so, so, and then you guys packed up and drove out to Montreal. Is that yeah. the story? Wow, yeah, we took a little U haul before you. This was after you applied. No, so I came, when it was I came here. No, so when I when I had this uh, ongoing things with University of um, Manitoba, then I applied uh, also to the University of McGill. I don't remember if Concordia, I don't think it's the, I didn't even know about Concordia, I knew about McGill, the other universities were French, and even though I knew French and quite fluently in my country, I didn't feel it was as, mm. after being in an English province, yeah. I mean, I was living in English, it wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. So, I applied to McGill, something happened and it was... This is before you got here? Yes, I think so. And um, anyway, so the application was that, and yes, someone told me about uh, Concordia. When I got here, I met, ¿te uh, acordás de ese argentino cordobés, David? Mm. I don't remember. So we got here. How was the story? It was a crazy story. So Mira was taking, was eight months old. She was taking formula. So... She got sick, and I think it was the change in the water that you used to make the formula. Mm. So we ended up in St. Justine Hospital for a couple of days. Meantime, Andrew was out. What were you doing? You bumped into David in La Casa de Esa Chica. Is this in Montreal? Yeah. So somehow, so I stayed in the hospital with Amira for two or three days. And then, meantime, he was trying to, you know, rent a place. And somehow, he bumped into a couple of Argentinian people. ¿Cómo se llamaba la chica? Anyway, so this girl, and she's talking to this guy, David, you remember. And uh, somehow, David said, okay, if you don't have a place where to stay, because they were painting the place or we were looking for the place, uh, was in Court St. Catherine and the Curry. It's called Castor. The, the <laughs> he said, you can stay with me. Oh, mm. I know exactly where that is. Yeah. Near the gas station. Yeah. Court St. Catherine and the Curry. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, for the project. <laughs> And no. then, uh, so, so yeah, so we stayed with David. He used to, he was living in the gay village, right? Mm. Yeah. So we so it was really like he didn't have to do that. He opened the door of his house. So it was a really nice thing. We stayed with him maybe for a few days uh, until they finished painting and doing the floors and so on. And then we moved there. Mm. And we stayed there for a year, and then we moved to McLean across from the park. Yeah, right. That, and, yeah, that's and where Coke you Denage. went. Yeah, both yeah. houses, with both places were in Cote Is it, And Andre's cab driving at this time? Yes. He never drove no, a cab. Pizza. 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 Yeah. <laughs> right. So, anyway, and then meantime... And you're doing your PhD. No, I was... Um, yeah. No, and I hadn't studied. When we first came, like, 
So I took my papers and I went and I basically knocked the door and got uh, interviews with all kinds of professors at university. <laughs> That's when you don't know it. So and I was, you know, because they had students who had worked with them, hoping to be accepted in the program and doing uh, slavery work. And so I was coming here with all this, I thought, you know. Anyway, so because there's a difference, in, and then, you know, that's, that's why I say, you know, you got to just jump on life. Something is going to happen. If you stay home, nothing is going to happen. Mm. So um, one of these people I met in, um, at, that was at Concordia, I remember Professor Gray, I can't remember his first name. He was British. <laughs> so he said to me, so he went, he looked at the pencil and then he sat and he starts this conversation with me and he said, you know, um, we were traveling in Latin America and actually the only country I was interested in visiting was Argentina <laughs> and we were in Bolivia oh, and then the Falkland words oh my God. starts and I couldn't get in because mm. he was British. So mm. he was... Anyway, and he... Meanwhile, you were trying to get out. <laughs> yes. It was, <laughs> so we were talking about that, and he, somehow he felt he had to help me out. Mm. You never know mm -hmm. who you're going to bump into. Yeah. Uh, and you but just, he was from Concordia? Yeah. Okay, but he still had some sort of connections at McGill? Or... No. So he was at Concordia, and then he said, wait a second. So he went to the, the next office and uh, brought this young professor who needed to have the students and so on. His name is uh, David Senior, happens to be Jewish from Egypt. Originally, he came when he was eight. He's still now, what, I think he's about to retire, but he was working out of the first the Allen Memorial. And then the last time I bumped into him, he was at, um, he's at the MHC. I think he's still the Allen. And, um, so he he says he introduces us and then there was a course that Concordia had and it was called uh, you could do it as an independent student and it was like an a thesis an independent study and so he said you know we can use it as an equivalent of a normal thesis Whoa. which you already have you know mm. so for a year I met with David and he had his own topic of research so I worked with him we ran the experiments and so on. And he and Professor Gray wrote me the mm. uh, letters of reference needed for McGill. Wow, so oh, great. Me here okay. And then I knocked okay. doors and et cetera, et cetera. And then I bumped into Frank, who ended up being my supervisor, who again was like fascinated that I was coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and so he had uh, accepted not to work with her, but in the program, because he was the director, Carmen, from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And did you guys move here by that time, or this was much later? Well, how long? So from there... You no. were in Cotonej. Oh, this house? Yeah. No, no, no. There's no. another place in between. Yeah. Okay, so you're right. Okay. Yeah, we, I, we, I so always... wait, did, did you get your... Did you finish your PhD while Olivia was... I was born. You were born. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Okay. We were live, my first house was on McClinton. The second one is... You know that bridge that's on Westminster? Mm -hmm. And then you go Co over the bridge. And yeah. No, that's where Montreal West. That's where we used to live. Montreal go all West. the way west yeah. Montreal West. The last street. Go this way now. There's like a little bridge. Right. Yeah. Isn't that Cote St. Luke? Up over that bridge? Yeah. Okay, if you continue. Not Cote Road. Just Cote St. Luke. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But, but we were in Montreal. We were in this side. So it's... Uh, no, it's after the bridge. Yes, but it's after the bridge. It's oh, I see. The border is... is it's, it's okay, the border is still... Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. on this side so of the was, bridge... So that was the house we lived at. Right? Montreal here West. is on the other side of we the bridge. We were living gotcha. in the... So not, so not far from here. In the street, it's okay. called Hudson. Okay. Hudson. Across from... From a par another park. Edinburgh School Park. Right, because you guys moved here right after the... I was the, five when what? we moved here. We moved here... It was after the... The ice storm. With the ice storm. But also the... Referendum, right? The nine. Yeah, that was after. Yeah. Uh, no, you bought this house. No, it was right before. Right? Yeah. Is it cheap? Is that right the, before? Yeah. Because everyone was well, worried we about to everyone move leaving. from there, and then they did. We were like, okay, I finished. Do we stay in this province? Do we move? Because <laughs> you didn't know else? if they were going to. What's going to happen yeah. here? And so, and then we stayed. Okay. But um, and we moved here when I was five. 
Were you, were you five or I was five. three? Five. And here being this house. Where's this house? And E.G. Okay. <laughs> I guess that, that'll do. Yeah. Um. All right. Montreal. Maybe the move Loyola. now is just getting some dates clear. Uh, this is the one, which yeah. is great. So, um, born in Buenos Aires in... <laughs> when were you born in Buenos Aires? <laughs> <My> year, <mommy. laughs> Not that I want to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, or let's say, when did you leave Buenos Aires? After the folk, the Falklands, after Malvinas. And do you know what year that would have been? Yeah, Apoph of course, 82. Okay, 82. I'm taking notes of this, the dates. Well, we're, we have it here, but good I stuff. Know, good so 82, and then you got to Israel in 82, mm -hmm. and then you stayed in Israel for two years. Mm -hmm. When You went to see Andre in 83 in, in mm -hmm. France, well, in Paris, know. and then, then went to Canada in 80. Wait, wait, wait. Four? 1982, 1983 is France. But I didn't live in France. Right, you just went to go see him. Still, yeah. Okay, then back to then I went back to Israel. In 1983? Yeah, I didn't stay that long. She could have chose to stay with me. Yeah, but I... I but then I but learned... I hadn't seen her family. She wanted to go see the fam jam. No, and also I didn't want to stay in France. Because <laughs> I found that... Um, they look at you as a foreigner no matter how long you're there. Oh. So it was this little incident. It was an incident. So we went someplace, he knew some people, so we ended up in this apartment having coffee or whatever. And then there is this guy with his uh, partner, and then she's... Uh, and he's calling her like Greek. I thought she was Greek. She was third generation in France. But... You know, it's still, and I said, you know, a, a country where you never fully belong, yeah. I can't embrace. Huh. Very different than Israel, no matter where you're coming from, as long as you are Jewish, it's your country. Huh. So to me, this was like, you know, I don't know if I want to be in a country like that. Now, Canada, and almost, no, I'm not saying all, but most uh, countries in America, were She's a little built, newer. But we're built by immigrants. Right. So everybody speaks with an accent. Most people come from somewhere else. Right. And so it's... A little more yeah. accepting. Yeah, it's more multidimensional. I mean, it's, it's an immigration country. Yeah, right. but, but European countries are different. Now, yes, I could move. Yes, I could leave. But in those days... Well, and they were only, like, seriously populated as of, like, whatever it is. Yeah. 200 years ago or something. Yeah, so like it's a different... Story sure. and then you, it's a different context for immigrants, right? Because everybody's an immigrant. Yeah. Gotcha. According to my math, you would have left at 25. No, I didn't leave at 25. Yeah. At Argentina. 25 so, mommy would have been like 23. Maybe 23, yeah. Well, I did the, these two years minus, and it gives me 25. Yeah, but it was, I le maybe I left 81, I don't remember, whenever Malvinas was. So then we have Malvinas, then France, and back to Israel in 83. Yeah, or 84, I think I gone here 84, but it was early spring, so maybe I went back 83, and then I stayed a few months, not okay. fully a year. So got back 83, left 84, and then left okay. to Winnipeg in 84. I think so. And then, and, born in and then, two, so and then you guys were in Winnipeg for two, two years. years, and then in eighty six you left to eighty five. You would have checked out Toronto. Eighty six went back and then came here. Okay, and then so came here in got here in eighty six. <coughs> yeah, well, Lamira was eight months old, so must have been eight. And she was born in October, so it would have been so eighty seven. Officially, got you. Yeah. Okay, Andre. Sorry, so after Toronto, back to Winnipeg, and then Montreal. Yeah. And Your Montreal, turn, Andre. 87. Yeah. Okay. There well, we go. Let me, let me. I need some clarifications because I don't actually know if I have all of your um, dates. dates. When were you, uh, where were you born, first of all? In Bucharest. In Bucharest. In Bucharest. We're all capital people. Got you. Uh, not Winnipeg kind of. <laughs> provincial, provincial. And, and when did, did you live in Bucharest the whole time that you were in Romania? Yeah. And then when did you leave Bucharest? When, when I was 25. 
25 in the year. Just I finished. That in was 82, you. you 82 like Nora. No, same. you're not you the same age. You're not the same age. Nice try, though. Same. Yeah, he's no, the same age. I arrived in April and she arrived in October. Yeah, that's the only. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I went and then we know of Errol the rest because, or when did you come to Winnipeg? I guess I is the only the other one. No, when did you leave Argentina? Uh, oh, Jesus, when did you leave Israel to go to France? Would have been after the year eighty three. Yeah, and then you came to Winnipeg in eighty well, five. It was an ideological struggle. You know, I, I'm a Francophile. I, I'm a Francophile. Me too, mm -hmm. but I after this, they see in the... But I was alone, I was like a, you know, although I have Romania, a lot of Romanian friends, but mm -hmm. she, she, she was here, she was very... My point is... So you came here following me. Yes. You came here yeah, for me. You went to France to follow me. No, but he's not saying that, he says... He said, oh, <laughs> no, I don't know, I was alone. He so just said you were family. You followed a girl, Andre, we get it. He well, just you said, Nora well, well, was here, she was family. But my point is, um, what, the, what the lesson you should both take? I don't even know for which course. Is okay, so actually, that, one last. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. You're a pumper. You know, a pumper generation. <laughs> you have no idea what struggle or danger or you, know. you sound like an eighty year old who's like, yeah. no. in my no, time, no, children well, were more appreciative. I, mean, wait, I think wait, wait, there's wait, a wait, lot wait, of accuracy. Yes, I, I think I have one last question too. Yeah. Was there any, um, what would be the word? Um, okay, well, it's, was there any tension in the initial years of you guys meeting over the fact that, Nora, you were coming from a fascist dictatorship and, Andre, you were coming from an Argentine... Uh, I just want to say Argentina all day long. A uh, communist no, dictatorship? No, not at all, because no, no. we are young and, and, and very sex crazy. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the poli politics were not involved. Much later in life. Okay, <laughs> later in life, that sort of comes <laughs> into play. Um, but um, do you um, don't, do you have, do you, you, I think, have a pretty strong political agenda, well, agenda, but, or uh, opinion. opinion at that point. And Andre, yeah. are you less so of? She was totally fanatic pro communist, and I was totally fanatically anti. But you're telling me that that didn't come up all that much. No. Immediately come up the discussion in the bed, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was living in the communist. I was suffering, and I was punished, and I was emasculated in the communist. And here are these people from Argentina or from America or from France from or from... All, yeah, they all... They, they believe in communism. And I said, you don't know what you are talking. I was living the communism. Yeah. You, you just don't theoretically right. that it's a the nice idea. Who immigrated to Israel in those days, yeah, that's from France, Latin America, and so on, they ended up in kibbutz. Yeah, yeah they, they were leftists, but they, they just talk nicely because they don't know what that well, We don't. We <laughs> know Romania, <laughs> Russia, Poland, Bulgaria, you know, we know what the hell is that, you know. Yeah. People went to prison, people were killed, people yeah, were so, in, in so gulags, in gulags for God's sake. For, so was in all those our countries, you know, people wanted to express their ideas and they were killed. <laughs> they disappeared. I understand. You know, they we, were we, we come from the same kind of trauma. Okay, I think this so is a classic politics is a circle. Uh, <laughs> no, because it's a fascinating <laughs> subject that we come from. I think from it's a very uh, noteworthy aspect of your parents' story. Um, yeah, so we, we didn't even settle that after 40 years of marriage. She's still a staunch uh, leftist. That's what keeps the fire going, guys. You know, you gotta have a little. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. You used yeah. to love Regan. Now you <laughs> finally said, "Oh, you know, it it wasn't." Yeah, but still, I don't love comedies. All no, right. Well, on the note of Ronald Reagan, I think we should leave it off here. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Nora. Okay. Thank yes. you for your time, Andre. Yes, it did help, and uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Great interview. So we'll turn it off and tell you that.